certainly knows the strategy he was going to act. But in terms of the policy, the group makes the decision. And usually, African culture is democratic. So I'm, I'm explaining some stuff. I'm dipping into the integration trap. Uh, African culture is democratic. It starts with the Twa. Most of you haven't got that far in this book. It's chapter two, that the world's first people came into being 144,000 years ago. They are the world's first people. All human beings come from them. First people in China were Anu, A-I-N-U, Chua, little tiny people. First people in Japan were Chua, Anu, little tiny people. First people in Egypt were Chua, Anu, Asar, Aset, Peru. Um, they were all Anu little tiny people. And when they made decisions, everybody had to agree to it. So in Africa, that is generally the way decisions are made. The problem with Africa today is Western systems have come in. The IMF, International Monetary Fund, World Bank, and they tell countries what they must do. End your free education. End your free medical care. Sell off your water. I'll be speaking in Jamaica on Garvey's anniversary, a whole nation of Jamaica. August 17th, uh, next month. The IMF has just left Jamaica. The last thing they want to take that the Jamaicans have is their water. You understand? You're a poor person. What if you can't pay because they're going to sell it to some big corporation in the United States or Western Europe? And so what happens if you can't pay for the water you drink out of a dirty stream? That's what's happened to people in South Africa. So it used to be in Africa, the idea was the land, the air, and the water was owned by no one. It was shared by everyone because it's God's gift. And as a result, you didn't have no people that couldn't afford water because water is free. It's God's gift. And there was nobody homeless because everybody had land. They could grow a crop. You understand? But now with this thing called capitalism that a lot of you think is great because some of you are in here to get jobs in the corporation, uh, capitalism is about making the rich rich and the poor poor, baby. I'm telling you. And if you think that this is a great system, then you explain to me why now you can go to college and end up working making $10, $8.50 an hour. You understand? While the corporations are running away like fat rats. Am I telling the truth? Mm -hmm. huh? I mean, the biggest hustlers on the planet is the pimp called the corporate pimp. Mm -hmm. So in case you, huh? They don't pay taxes. Uh, they hide their money all over the world. I don't either, by the way. I don't pay taxes either, but mine's legal. I have an accounting firm. I'm not a tax protester. I just figure if you are exploiting me, I'm not paying you to exploit me. You hear me? But most people are too scared to fight the IRS. I fight the damn IRS. Mm -hmm. But it's legal, right? Claiming nothing, I'm not entitled. I just get all my deductions. And I have me a whole firm that represents me. Whole firm. And I pay them money to represent me. <laughs> now, if that money was going to health care or education, I'd gladly pay it. You know what I'm saying? But if it's going to the rich, hell no. But I'm not encouraging you to do that. <laughs> Only do it if you're smart. You don't want to be no Wesley Snipes going to jail on our protests and taxes. And I respect Wesley, black belt in karate, a hell of an actor, and he's conscious. He's done a couple of black films, John Henry Clark and others. I like him, brother. But uh, he was listening to those right wingers. Uh-uh. Don't be going up here to no pro tax protest. Get you a firm, brother. And either pay nothing because you're entitled to, or pay as little as you have to, but you don't want to be serving no three years even though you beat the rat because the judge decided to stick you because you didn't file for taxes. But file your taxes and get your refund. You know what I'm talking about? That's a side point. Uh, Ms. Gartry, yeah. Uh, I'm just want to say also NAFTA and uh, the Caribbean Basin are two initiatives that the United States government started in the Caribbean that undermine the indigenous farmers and growers of the Caribbean. Exactly. Uh, Mexico, for example, is a result of NAFTA. In the Mexican Revolution, one of my favorite leaders was a man named Emiliano Zapata. Bad brother, meaning good. You understand? And Zapata uh, fought for the communal rights of the Mexican people. 
same traditions that Africans have. The Mexican is a mixture of Spanish, Indian, and African. And the Indian and African cultures are both communal. So they had in the Mexican Constitution the provision that the land could not be sold. And as a result, Mexican farmers could grow their corn or grow whatever they grew and feed themselves. But under NAFTA, the U.S. pressured the corrupt Mexican government to end the communal land rights of Mexican people. And now you have these big corporations going in there and grabbing up the land. And as a result, Mexicans were forced to come into the United States. And now they're calling them aliens when they stole California from the Mexicans. Who's the alien? You know what I mean? Stole the Arizona, stole New Mexico. You understand? Stole Texas. Really, outright stole Texas. You know? mm -hmm. So, um, one of the things that drove the movement was this idea of democracy. That we had our say-so. The people had their say-so. And as a result of that, groups that did this made very few mistakes. If your decisions are based on consensus. If Africa was based on African democracy, Africans would be among the most prosperous people on the planet. That's our culture. We wouldn't be selling our resources off. We would be seeing that those resources benefited us. And I'm telling you, in order for Africa to get its act together, it's going to have to go back to, as the hip hopers say, black to the future. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Going back to the best of your past and updating it. And so this was a key for us. Go ahead. These were UC Berkeley students getting arrested. We're radicalizing them. This is another point I want to make about African-American culture. African-American culture is one of only two cultures indigenous to this country. What do you think the other culture is? Native American. Native American. Native American. Native American. Some people would think European-American because their culture in politics and economics, in military, in science, rules the roost. Law, as illegal as it is, it rules the roost. You know what I mean? But it's not indigenous to this country. It's an import from Europe. Europe uh, American law is based on European common law. American warfare is based on Clausewitz, the idea of using overwhelming force. American economics is based on Adam Smith, a British economists. You understand? The only thing original about Euro-American culture is two things. It's not original <laughs> and it's an exaggeration of Europe. <coughs> you know, ain't that funny? <laughs> you should be laughing. You understand? <laughs> and double O soul, remote control, automatic pilot, Negro, is the first one to say, I ain't got no culture. They took my culture in slavery. There's not a people on the planet that don't have a culture. Culture is your way of life and design for living. Even dogs have cultures. And different breeds of dogs have different cultures. Y'all know what I'm talking about? <laughs> but all human beings have culture. It's your way of life. It's your design for living. And in the case of the African in America, the African in America was attacked through enslavement. They tried to wipe out this African culture. But we have the oldest culture on the planet. We came into being 144,000 years ago, and it's an adaptable culture. It's a flexible culture, and it's a culture that's time-tested. So when they outlawed the drum, we made the whole body the drum. Mm -hmm. When they outlawed African language, we created Ebonics. And every generation of black people got their own way of talking, and you need to really know that language to know what it means. Am I telling the truth? <laughs> And by the way, y'all hip hoppers, hip hop comes from a Wolof expression, which means hippie cat. It's a Wolof term, West Africa. It means seeing from all sides, <laughs> which also means being hip as opposed to square. Being able to shake your hips and be cool, because that's the roof. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> That'd be the African up in there. You'd be more African than you know. You understand? So they attacked African language, and what we did is we changed English into something else, because if you listen to the southern language in the south, the southern white man is speaking black and white. Mm -hmm. Y'all, right? mm -hmm. That's the African vowel system. And towards themselves, 
They are practicing one of the highest principles of African culture, which is civility. African people are nice people. Some of us ain't nice no more. We know what's happening. Y'all been reading my little book. I've written, I ain't romanticizing this stuff. You know what I mean? But we be nice people, basically. Southern whites are nice to each other. They ain't too nice to us. They think it's from a low tree or from a high tree. That's a liberal or conservative. The conservative hangs you high, the liberal hangs you low. Either way, your butt gets hung. But they're grinning skin. And so they have a level of politeness they learn from us. And that's, again, your African culture. And one of the key things in African culture is the word. The word. And so black folks took this thing, and while they attacked our language, we created the funky word, the blues word, right? Which is a part of the spiritual blues. It's called the blue note. It's at the foundation of the culture. All hip hop is is urban blues. It's blues updated. And when we had the spirituals, the African did not think the way the European thought. The European thinks either it's sacred here, sunny, when you go to pray for God. And it's secular here, which means God ain't no part of it. We saw God in everything. You understand? And so we didn't separate the sacred from the secular. So when we created the spirituals, we created the blues at the same time. Because if you listen to the spirituals, the song says, soon I'll be done with the troubles of this world, going home to live with God. Almost all of that is the blues, baby. Soon I'll be done with the troubles of this world. The end part is God. You understand? And if you listen to gospel, what is gospel but sacred blues? That's Thomas Dorsey, who was a blues singer that put the fructified sound back into gospel. You understand? Because we think in a twin way. The blues are the spiritual. Gospel is sacred blues. You understand? When your head is wrapped on right, you know, then you know you see things in a balanced way. That's why we're able to skin cats in this country. That's why this movement was so successful. We are operating on a culture and didn't know it. That's a problem with too many of our people today. We're operating on a culture and don't know it. And now if they stuff drugs in our community, we're going crazy because they put another culture in there. And that culture is threatening this rich culture, and we run around talking about we ain't got no culture. You got one of the two cultures indigenous to this country. It's, when you say it's indigenous, it means it's rooted here. You hear me? It means when problems come up, it responds. This is another thing I say about this new African culture is organic, meaning when we have problems, the culture responds organically. What was the San Francisco Freedom Movement or what was the Southern Civil Rights Movement? It was like something in the ground. The people decided, hell no, we ain't taking this mess no more. You understand? It was an organic response. In the 80s, uh, you know, when we had some serious problems, our scholars got together, African-centered scholars. And for the first time in the history of this country, they started an African-centered movement. They went back to ancient Kemet. I'm the only one in this movement of African-centered scholars that comes out of a movement. I knew politically what this meant. Most of them didn't. But they were organically responding to the fact that we didn't know our past. We're a bunch of historical amnesiacs. By the way, U.S. of A, United States of Amnesia. <laughs> so in case you think we're just talking about black people, the average American knows nothing about their past. And what they do know is jive not the truth. And we know next to nothing historically because of slavery. And so our scholars came along and said, we will go back to black. And they went to Kemet. And they said, that is the highest civilization in the ancient world. And they were right. And then what happened is the hip hoppers picked that up, public enemy, um, KRS-One, a whole bunch of others. They took that on. And so now, like, you know, you've got people uh, like Chuck D, you know, who stand on principle. Excellent. And explain. Underground. But it's your culture. This this corporate stuff ain't your culture. This booty stuff. You know what I mean? The B stuff. All the bling, 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 only stuff. That ain't your culture. And there's nothing wrong with you having some wealth, by the way. I'm not into you being poor. We're struggling for black folks to have everybody is entitled to have their vine and fig, fig tree. You know what I mean? Everybody's got a right to the tree of life. Poverty's misery. 
So I ain't in here talking to no poverty. You hear me? You need to bust the system that keeps you poor. You know what I'm talking about? So the point is, this movement came out of this mighty culture. The other thing I want to stress here is this. New African culture is the culture of popular choice in this country. You know that because you know with each generation that comes along with the new spinoff, every other group is following this culture. Am I telling you? Right. right. Mm -hmm. Hip hop, you got Asian hip hop, you got Latino hip hop, you got Native American hip hop, you got white hip hop. Am I telling you the truth? Yes. And we don't take our culture and say, you have to be black. Because another feature of New African culture is we're humanistic people and we're inclusive. We speak, if, if you listen to the blues or if you listen to hip hop, good hip hop, it's speaking to the conditions of humanity, not just black folks. And everybody can relate to it. And then what happens is an Asian, uh, I'm in ethnic studies, San Francisco State, Africana studies, and you know I hear the Asian hip hoppers, and they're talking about immigration. They'll take your culture and use it for their own ends. And that's good, because one of the other features of New African culture is a liberatory culture. It's about freedom. And our definition of freedom is different from the Euro-American definition of freedom. The Euro-American definition of freedom, the one you're sold is freedom, justice, and equality. If that's true, why don't you have it? You understand? If it's all about freedom, justice, and equality, why don't you get it? But I'm going to tell you, Euro-American and European concept of freedom is this. Whoever has the power does what they want to. And I'm, I'm a philosopher, by the way, a historian, political theorist. Philosophy is my first subject. And I study African philosophy, Asian philosophy, Native American philosophy, African American philosophy, and European philosophy. And I'll tell you, the founder of... European philosophy is a man named Hesiod, H-E-S-I-O-D, H-E-S-I-O-D. He was illiterate. Uh, <laughs> he was a uh, sheep herder and he was a poet. And in his book, Theogony, which is not a book because he obviously couldn't write, but based on what he said, it gets put in a book. He's really speaking to what the Greeks thought. And he talks about heaven and he says, in heaven, there's this God and the supreme god for the Greeks was Zeus, Z-E-U-S. A lot of you will go through Greek philosophy and not understand what you studied, because I went through it and didn't understand what I was studying. When I went to San Francisco State, the professor laid on the desk and said, what I'm telling you today, you won't understand any more of this by the end of the semester. And I dropped the class. He said, yeah, if I can't understand you, I'm dropping you. you know what I mean? But the thing is, Hesiod said this, a Zeus the supreme god. Zeus did what he wanted to do. In other words, the definition of freedom comes from their idea of their religion of arbitrary power. That if you have the power, you do what you want to do. And if you don't believe it, check out the economic meltdown that occurred in 2008. Mm -hmm. And notice that they brought the global economy down, and then they came to you and told you to save them. But the people they brought down who lost their homes, how many of them got saved? Obama had $30 billion to save people on foreclosure, and he said, we just forgot to spend it. Do you believe that? No, because presidents are serving the rich. They save the rich. They're not saving your cocoa. In fact, when you voted for him for a second term, your unemployment rate was the same as it was in the first term. Everybody else's went down except yours. Double old soul, you know, got a brother in the White House. And, you know, it's nice to have a brother in the White House, but I'm telling you, I don't care if you're black, brown, red, white, yellow. If you wrong, you wrong. And everybody else put their foot up his butt but us. And everybody got something. Latinos did on immigration. Gays did on their issues. Everybody, labor did. Everybody got something except remote control, double old soul, Negro. Because he's so glad to have a black president. Guess what? He was smart enough to know that. You understand? And I ain't putting him down. I'm not putting him up. But I'm saying your culture says right comes before anything else. So the European conception of freedom is whoever has the power does what they want. The new African, I'm not talking about the whole culture. I'm just giving you some little tippy points, little tip off the top. 
you have a different conception of freedom. And by the way, next to spirit and family, freedom is next to those two things the most important thing in New African culture. And because of the way we face oppression, we reformulated this idea of freedom. We came up with one of the most complex, beautiful ideas of freedom on the planet. Because black people love freedom. I'll tell you something about black people. We don't like anybody over us telling us what to do. Is that the truth? Yeah, it's true. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you something else. If you are a brother and you're in a relationship, the easiest way to lose a relationship is try to tell your woman what to do. <laughs> that is smart. Am I telling you the truth? Now, and I would say to the sisters, because many of you come out of strong families, and for the last two generations, most of you had seen a man in the house. So you all are used to having strong women in the house. But you got to understand, if you want to keep a man, don't be telling him what to do either. Because we all like it. They're not telling you to. Ladies will say, I wonder why he won't do it. But you told him. Suggest it, baby. Offer alternatives. Give choices. Because we have a different conception of freedom. And here's our definition of freedom. Listen to this. And it's in hip hop. It's in the civil rights movement. It's in black power. It was in Malcolm. It was in the Black Panther Party. I don't care what. It's in jazz. By the way, it's really in jazz. Mm -hmm. The most complex music on the planet. We have this idea. Whereas arbitrary freedom is the idea of whoever has the power does whatever they want. Think about that. That's savage. Because that means you can do anything. And by the way, they did. They wiped out the Native Americans on this continent here. They went across the planet wiping out people of color in the name of progress. The slogan of the average white person was, the only good Indians are dead Indians. I have Native Americans who said it was illegal to be Africa, uh, Native American until recently. They've been trying to kill us until recently. Yeah. But the African conception of freedom, and I'm quoting Dizzy Gillespie. How many people heard of Dizzy Gillespie? One of our great jazz musicians. He was a trumpet player. He was an innovator of bebop, one of the most complex musical forms created in the 20th century. And he was a deep thinker. His book, To Be or Not to Bop, is on philosophy. You hear me? And Disney said this, African American conception of freedom is complicated. And that's, by the way, the nature of our culture. It's complex. We have the most complex culture in this country because we're dealing in a complex reality. This is not a simple reality. And so he said this, the new, the African-American idea of freedom is based on two comp contradictory principles, discipline and freedom. Discipline and freedom. Now think about this. Most people would think that it's one or the other. You have discipline or you have freedom. But actually, um, freedom is discipline. Mm -hmm. You really aren't free. Freedom isn't free. There's a price for freedom. Frederick Douglass said the price of freedom was struggle. And if you're going to be affected, like the San Francisco Summer, we didn't lose a battle. Discipline, baby. Muhammad Ali, best boxer that ever hit the ring, or maybe Jack Johnson, you have to debate it. But they had discipline, you understand? And when you have discipline, then you can be free. Muhammad Ali could do rope a dope because he had the discipline to break the rules of boxing. The rules of boxing is don't do rope a dope. Don't get on the rope, you'll get whipped. But if you're the master, you can create new rules. And so the key thing about discipline and freedom is this. In our culture, you don't have the freedom to do wrong. Y'all get this? That's the first level of discipline. If you're a musician, you can't play that instrument wrong. Now, you can come up with new ways to play it after you have the discipline to come up with a new tools. But until you master the fundamentals, you got to do it right. But right ethics is always the first thing. And then you're free. And that's called improvisation. Or you all call it freestyle. Based on discipline and freedom. And then Disney said this. It's also based on two other contradictory principles. Spontaneous organization. Mm -hmm. The entire civil rights movement, Black Power movement, Black Panther movement, Marcus Garvey movement, uh, the slave revolts that occurred in this country, 
the way my great grandmother who would go into her shelf to come up with some food when there wasn't anything to cook, she would put something in a pot, and when they got through, she called it slop, and you wouldn't want to eat it. And then she'd call it gullion, and you'd say, it's got to be good. <laughs> and out of literally nothing, she created something, and it was spontaneous organization. It's creating something on the spot. Good jazz musician like uh, Miles Davis would go into a studio with two or three notes and come up with a whole record album. And he would say this, because he nearly lost his voice, he said, great music starts with what you know, and then you go beyond yourself. Now imagine, without anything laid down, he would come up with Kind of Blue, one of the prettiest pieces of music you ever heard. You understand? On the spur of the moment, Rosa Parks said, I ain't giving this seat up. Edie Nixon said, I'm going to test this in court. Edie Nixon calls Martin Luther King and says, uh, I want to have a meeting in your church. He said, I got to think about it. Edie Nixon called all the preachers and said, the meeting's in King's church. <laughs> <laughs> and then on the spur of the moment, and by the way, two weeks earlier, Rosa Parks had been at a meeting at the Highlander Training School. It was a leadership training school in the South. And she said, black people in Montgomery will never get together because, you know, it's just hard to get black people to unite. Yeah. And then on the spur of the moment, this is a slave narrative where a slave, enslaved Africans said, we would think of a sound of Africa and we would create a music on the spur of the moment. That's spontaneous organization. We are a spontaneously organized people. And we take it on the spot and it comes out organized. Because there's discipline behind it. And I'm going to say this about New African culture and African American. And all people have their own culture. Chinese, by the way, study Chinese culture. The ethos of the Chinese people is Li, L-I, comes from Confucius. Li means order. You've got a billion, 300 million Chinese. You better have some more. Handful of Chinese leaders in China are respected enough that they've shifted their economy to the point where 300 million people have been taken out of poverty. They still got a billion that they've got to take out, but they've taken 300 million out while more and more people in this country are getting poor. You hear me? So they have this idea of Li. That's their thing. The new African has an ethos. Ethos, my wife is very heavy. We were sitting on the porch before we married, and she made a comment. She said, African in America has an ethos distinct from all Africans in the world. Mm -hmm. She was born in Britain. She comes from Barbados. She was educated in high school, some college in New York, and then went back to Britain, where I met her. By the way, this is my reward. I was Speaking on the 50th anniversary, the 50th anniversary of the Fifth Pan African Congress, which was the greatest meeting of Africans in the 20th century, I chaired the political committee of the Sixth Pan African Congress in Tanzania, 1973. The last person's house I stayed in was this lady here. See, God will reward you if you do good work. That's, right. That's, That's right. a side point. That's right. <laughs> so the point is that in New African culture, this idea of uh, freedom is fundamental to the culture. And uh, you know, we you know we have a very creative uh, conception. So we have our own ethos. Chinese is lit. The European is we got the power he does what he wants to. He dresses it up and makes it look nice, but it's real savage, baby. Mm -hmm. You better have some power because the only thing they respect is power. Am I telling you the truth? Am I telling you? And some of us are starting to act like him, and that's no good. That's no good. Some of us are starting to act in an arbitrary way. That drug culture is steeped in on us. You know what I mean? Right. So my wife was saying that our ethos is distinct from all other ethos of Africans in the world. I never thought about that. I said, wow, that's heavy. So I started to think, what is our ethos? Ethos is your way of life. It's the way you carry yourself, the way you walk, the way you talk, the way you think, the way you see the world. You know? She wasn't putting us down. She was saying, ours is different. You know what I mean? It's unique. So I started looking at it. 